This is going to be part three of the tutorial where I will show how to create um, a server or connect Dreamweaver to our server, uh, configure it, and make it ready for uploading the entire portfolio site. So we stopped on part two where we organized all our local folders. These are these are sitting, you know, on my hard drive or my computer. In order to tell Dreamweaver where to upload. I will go back to the site menu. This time I'm not starting a new site because I have a site already. I'm managing sites. And in the very long list of sites that I have, here's the site we're working on, Capstone. I double click and it opens it up. And this is exactly where we left it off. In the local site, I told it where my local site folder is. In that same menu, I will go to servers, add. Right now there are no servers, so I will add a server with the plus sign. Now, the name of the server, this is just for internal Dreamweaver usage, but it might as well be my .com. But it doesn't really matter what you put there. Uh, connect using FTP. FTP always uses port 21. The FTP address, I'm going to put benezer.com, but... Uh, as some people find out, depending on what your hosting configuration is, sometimes you'll have to put ftp.yourdomain.com. And some, for some people, it might even work only if you put the actual um, uh, IP address. If you're not sure what your IP address is, if I go back to um, the cPanel, on my hosting at the cPanel, it's going to tell me what my dedicated IP address is. So I can use for FTPing either this or this. But for, you know, from my experience in my own hosting, simply the name of the domain works just fine. I'm going back to Dreamweaver. Then the username is that uh, capstone at benezer.com, the uh, FTP account that I created uh, in part one of the tutorial. I'm making absolutely sure that there's no spaces before or after. And the password that I created for it, I recommend writing those things down somewhere. And now, I'm not going to put any root directory and I'm not going to change the web URL because this is intended to go to the root of my .com. It's actually going to the public HTML of my .com, but as far as the, you know, the general public is concerned, that is transparent. They don't see the actual name of the folder public HTML. It simply takes them to the root of my domain. Test. Test it successfully. Great. Okay save. Uh, if I'm planning on doing also uh, PHP work, uh, or if some of my sites are based on PHP, what I might want to do is take this remote server that I just created, duplicate it. It'll automatically call it, you know, blah, 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 to test this one as well. There's no reason if the first one worked that the second one wouldn't and save and this is why duplicate the same server twice because it's using it as a remote server remote is for you know moving files around uploading downloading and a testing server for being able to test php files directly from um dreamweaver for the strict uh, purposes of uploading the second one is optional i don't really need it but as i might as well have that and save the other thing I recommend doing at this point is also in the manage files uh, dialog to, while my site is selected, to export what's called a site definition. Export all my current site. It doesn't really export the files, it exports the site configurations with you know the password and the servers and where the local file is and so on and it it's asking me if i want to back up everything i click ok it when it what it wants to save is a file called capstone.ste it's like a mini little file it's tiny that uh, i can always re-import that into dreamweaver if i'm moving to another computer or if for some reason my site definition got erased it's always a good thing to have done and here it is 
Maya, capstone.ste. It's only for my own organization. Now, here comes the part where I want to see if I can upload things uh, online. So in Dreamweaver, I will expand to show both local and remote files. By the way, I'm using the standard um, window configuration because if I was using the developer one, things would shift to this side. I just like the standard one. And in the standard one, in the files view, I will click to expand. On a PC, it looks a little different where it you know, occupies most of the screen, but still we can see the familiar FTP look where it's got two columns, one for local files, one for remote. I can click here to connect or this icon. And what it will do now is connect to my public HTML. Chances are I already have things there from you know last semester, from things I already uploaded. It shows me the entire content of my um, um, of my public HTML. And here comes the biggest step. Now I can start uploading things. Now I can literally start dragging things, but I don't recommend it. I recommend doing one out of two things, either picking specific parts. Let's say I want to upload to the index HTML, select it and use the up arrow called put, which is just another word for upload. And it'll ask me if I want to upload the dependent files. Dependents would be like, you know, images and um, uh, CSS and whatever this file is dependent upon to look correctly. I will always answer yes, because if those files are already there, it'll simply check it and, you know, and not upload them. But if they're not, it will upload everything this file needs, uh, images and, and, you know, and, and CSS and so on. And here it is. Another way of doing this is simply to select the root file uh, the root folder of my site, click put files. It'll ask me, are you sure you want to put the entire site? And I will click OK. This might take a while if the site is big, but at least I know that I am mirroring my entire content of my local site to online. Uh, how long will it take? Depending on how big you know those subfolders are and how many files are in them and so on. It might take a few minutes, but in the end, what I will have is a complete mirror of what I have on my site to what I have um, online, what I have on my remote. And while this is doing the long upload, what I can do when it's done is simply go to my domain and see if it was uploaded. Uh, in the next tutorial, which will come uh, soon, I will go into the specific file called work and show how to create links to the home pages of my individual work. Okay, here it is. It uploaded everything, or actually it's 56 out of 57. Oh, I know which file it's not uploading. That's fine. I will consider that done and my upload is done. Finishing the operation. There was one raw folder that did not upload. But that's because I named it wrong. Let's ignore that. Here it is. My entire site is now at the root of my .com and it's online. And I can simply go to benezer.com and of course, you know, in this case, I did not, you know, really replace the content, but this is what it would look like. The home page, I got my about page, and under the uh, uh, page called work, I got my examples. This is what I'm going to show how to create, not the look, but the actual links that go from my, you know, go to, you know, my uh, works file to see to show users examples of those mini sites that I have.